these are fathers. They have come to our studio from all parts of the state. Up to one half hour ago, they had never met each other. But they have something in common. Their sons face military service. These are mothers. They don't always like to talk about their problems. They are here tonight because their sons are being drafted and they want to know why. These men have served in the armed forces. They have younger brothers or nephews who are facing the draft. They have seen something of the world and they're here to say what they think. These girls have made plans some of them are engaged. Some are trying to decide. They have questions in their mind. They want to know what military service will do to their plan. These boys are just out of high school. They're not quite sure what the world holds for young men like themselves. Sometimes they would rather not think about the future. But tonight, they and their parents and their friends are going to face squarely the question before the house. My name is Ed Wagner. For some time, we people at Iowa State College and the WOI TV have been asking Iowa citizens around the state what they think about the matter of military service as it affects them and their families. We would like to tell you tonight what we found out. Uh, we could have played back for you the tape recordings that we made of the things these people said, or we could have tried to give you our impression of uh, what they said and how they sounded. But we thought instead that we would try something different. So we asked a group of citizens, just ordinary folks, farm people, housewives, members of 4-H clubs, if they would help. And they said they would. And we asked them to, to take the part of a family, the Adams family, we call them, and, uh, and let you know some of the things that they, that they learned about the feelings of people around Iowa. We asked them to represent a certain uh, part of the population, a certain attitude. Now, we will meet them in a little while. And you will see how they do react. And they're going to need your help. Before we meet our Adams family, I think I ought to tell you something about them. This is the Adams family back porch. It's just after dinner. It's about 8 o'clock, 8.15. It's getting a little cool outside, cooler. And uh, the family's uh, finished dinner. Let's see. Yes, just about... 8.15. And here comes Mr. Adams now. Oh, Mr. Adams. Good evening. Mr. Been busy? Same as usual. Mm -hmm. Always busy on the farm. What doing these days? Oh, well, hay making time Hay-making. now. Laying by the corn. Working all alone? Oh, no. No, I have my boy home. Oh, how old is with me? He's how 19. 19? That's right. Uh, any other sons to help? No. No other. No. Sort of a two-man farm. Yeah, it's a two-man operation, but we get along very well. Good. Do you have any plans for uh, the farm when you give up farming? Oh, yes. We're rather hoping that Glenn will want to take over. But again, of course, that's up to him. Mm -hmm. That's one of the privileges we enjoy, you know, in this country, is choosing our own occupation. That's a good one. What about this uh, matter of military service, Mr. Adams? Well, he's been registered for the draft about a year ago, you know, mm -hmm. when he was 18. Have you talked it over in the family very much? Oh, not too much, no. Well, why don't you sit up here on the porch, uh, right here? And uh, Mrs. Adams, will you come in, please? Had a busy day? A very busy day. Mm -hmm. What were you doing just now? Oh, getting ready for... We're getting ready for company this afternoon. Oh, I see. My brother Bill came over. And uh -huh. Anybody else? Oh, my son's girlfriend. She comes in quite frequently. Oh, we just had supper. We haven't washed the dishes yet. Well, what about... Uh, your son and this girl, pretty serious? Oh, no, I guess not. They're high school friends. They see each other real often, but mm -hmm. they're kids yet. Well, your son is 19. Uh, 
What do you think about this military situation as it affects him? Oh, uh, I don't think much about it. I mean, I don't try to think about it. I just hope that uh, maybe he won't have to go. After all, we're farmers, and we need all the help we can get. I see. Well, will you step up on the porch, Mrs. Adams, right here? And uh, here's Bill. Come on in, Bill. Not for smoke. <laughs> well, uh, uh, how was supper? Very good. Uh, my sister's a good cook. She's a good cook. Uh, you live on a farm, Bill? No, no. I'm, you know, a, I'm a businessman in town. Well, I'm you're a, from town. I get a service, I understand. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, last war. How long? Oh, three and a half years in active duty. What do you think of uh, young Glenn's chances? He's 19. It's about time. Yeah, I... Oh, I don't know. He's got to go, I suppose. He'll get his notice when he's there. Well, there's a lot of work to be done on the farm, too, Bill. Yeah. It's a tough spot. Tough I, spot. I, they've overloaded, I think. They, they've got quite an operation here for two fellows. You know uh, you know Glenn's girlfriend? Yes. She's all right. What do you think about I think they're planning to uh, maybe get married? Well, I don't know. They've been making moon eyes at each other now for a year. Well, why don't you go over here and sit on the porch, too, Bill? And uh, we'll meet Glenn and Alice. Come on in, Glenn and Alice. Not for the store. Huh? I see. You know, I'd like to ask you folks a pretty personal question, if it's all right with you. Uh, just how serious is this matter between you and Glenn? Oh, <laughs> well, I guess sort of. <laughs> it is. And uh, what do you think about this matter of the army uh, popping up one of these days? It might might call him. Well, I guess just have to wait for that. You haven't thought much of it. No, you ever I talk it over at all? Well, a little bit. A little bit, huh? Well, I'm going to ask Bill, I mean, uh, Glenn, to stand here just a minute with me. Would you uh, go up and sit down in that chair, please? Uh, Glenn, I noticed uh, an envelope you had there in the pocket. looks a little official. What is it? Oh, it's my notice. Get out from the it pistol. Is, huh? okay. What do you think about it? Oh, I guess my time. Your time. <laughs> you ever thought of going to college and taking one of the reserve officer trains? No, never thought of it. Never thought. What about deferment? Well, thought a little about it, but... I don't know, I guess it's my time, I'll have to go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, you could go down and enlist, you know. Oh, yeah, I'd get a place where I wanted, but mm -hmm. Dad needs me at home, and I got a pretty good line of stock. So have I you, uh, got dairy herd, so. talked it over with the family yet? No. You haven't. When do you plan to do that? Tonight. Tonight. Will you wait here just a moment? Before Glenn drops in on the family, on their back porch, will you people, seated at the tables here, Try to imagine, if you will, what the reactions of uh, Mother, Mrs. Adams, will be when Glenn comes in with this notice. It's official. He's received it. It's real. It's here today. Now, he's going to join his family in a moment. What do you think his mother's reactions are going to be? Well, you talk it over about, oh, about a couple of minutes. And then have your recorder jot down the answers, or you rather jot down your questions of what you think Mrs. Adams' reactions will be when Glenn comes in with the news. We'll take, we'll take about a minute. It'll be the hardest thing to do. your boy, uh, you can uh, be at the place where you just fall down in tears. Oh, no. Oh, no. You've got to. Uh, you've got to face it. Well, After all, it is, you're not. She's not alone. That's uh, true. So uh, mothers everywhere have... Uh, now that you've had your chance to make your predictions of what you think Mrs. Adams' reactions are going to be, suppose we move back to the Adams' back porch. And suppose we join them there as Glenn comes in with his news. Come on in, Glenn. Uh, no, come on, my dad. Oh, yeah. 
kids took an awful long stroll. What was going on out there? All we talked about this mess. <laughs> Boy, has it been hot in town. I've used every excuse I can to come out here for chow. <laughs> Somebody asked, another person asked me if it's hot enough for you, I'm going to poke him, I swear. <laughs> I said, wish we didn't live on the north end of the block. <laughs> Wind all comes from the south and we don't get any of it. Well, it's cooling off quite a bit now. I think it's real comfortable out here on the floor. Yeah, I'll be here again for That's the old argument. You want cold weather for your oats or warm weather for your corn? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll divide. We'll compromise on that one. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking good. They're looking great. What's the captain? All that, I got my notice to get down from a physical today. Uh-oh. Not, not <laughs> now. <laughs> That's right, Mother. <laughs> Do they still start them out with greetings? Uh? <laughs> oh, I'll start them out with the best of early. Well, I'll be darned. Oh. Well, it isn't anything to laugh at. Uh-huh. <laughs> you knew it was coming. What? Does that mean you have to go right away then? Or? Oh, I doubt it, Ellis. Well, the boys, it's been pretty soon. It's been running about a month after the physicals they've been leaving. Well? Well, does this mean that you have to go right away? No, that's just for my physical, Mother. Well, how how long until you'll have to go? Oh, I don't know that myself, Mother. Now, when do you take the physical? Where do you go for that? Oh, I go down to Des Moines for that. Yeah, I remember. My brother went in, like, the same old thing. There's really? nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about. Please. Worry about? You are in town and don't know anything about farming. How are you going to get along without him, Dad? With all this farm work, and he's got his uh, hogs and his uh, herd that he started. And uh, Don't you suppose we could get him deferred? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, let Dad answer. It's possible, probably. I think he'd prefer it that way, but it's his decision, isn't it, please? All the news cattle are his. We could do the rest of the work for half. We could even do some as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe you would ask for a deferment, right? Oh, I don't know. The rest of the boys are going, but you know how it is. I've got my livestock here. I don't want to go off and leave, but I hate to have Dad take care of all of it. He can't do the farm and take care of my livestock, too. Tom, Tom boys fight all right, so I mean, they go. Oh, I wouldn't ask for a deferment. I don't know. That's not good. Well, you've been in once, I guess maybe. Yeah, it's just not good. I'd take it and take it. Work, you can work out your problems somehow or another. Well, how about four years of college? If you go to college for four years, then by that time, this business will maybe come to an end and you won't have to go at all. How about that, Dad? Don't you suppose that'd be a good idea? Well, uh, he's never indicated much of an interest in college, but he's kind of felt that he started his career with his hog herd and his dairy herd. I think he's inclined to feel that what technical help he needs, he can get through the extension department to the uh, future farmers of America. Well, oh, Mr. Adams, don't you think maybe that Glenn ought to know whether he wants to go to college or not? Oh, I don't care about going to college, Dad. You know that, but I've got my livestock there. I just soon take care of it. I don't care about college. Well, gal, how do you feel about this? It's kind of a you in spot, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's mostly up to him, I guess. <laughs> After all. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do some tall thinking here, boy, aren't you, in the next month or so? Well, I don't know what we're going to do now. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to... Well, I lot up to her if we get married before I leave, if I have to leave. Oh, not get married. Well, you're just kids. <laughs> We've been out of high school. Yes, but you don't, Alice. You don't know anything about housekeeping and taking care of a family. And Glenn doesn't know much about management yet. Why, uh, you must wait several years yet. But how do you think the person learns about those things if they don't do them? Yeah, Mother, you know, I've taken care of my livestock now. I must be old enough to go to the army that they ought to realize that I'm old enough to get married, not mother. What do you think, Dad? Well, it's your problem and your decision, son, but I kind of feel like you do. But, you know, this war situation is going to make a man out of you, whether your mother thinks you're quite old enough to be on your own or not. And if you're old enough for <coughs> war responsibilities and for raising herds of livestock, well, I don't see why you couldn't get married if you really want to, after all. 
I think it's an experience that everybody should have when you're up and doing. You go up in a hurry, sis. I'm not cool. It don't take long. Thank you very much. Now that you folks have heard how the Adams family reacted when Glenn brought the news home, suppose we go back to you and ask you what you thought mother's reactions would be. You four veterans first. Uh, what does your recorder have to report? We as the veterans group wondered she thought, will he be able to pass the physical? We thought that undoubtedly she would feel downhearted, passionate, losing her son. She's going to wonder what's going to happen to him. Where is he going to go? What camp is he going to land in? That is our veterans' ideas of what the mother thought of. So putting ourselves, ourselves in Alice's place, thinking of his mother, <clears throat> it's, it's probably been more or less an expectation to her, but the actual shock of it being here <clears throat> will probably be something more than, well, she can probably take for the present. It will probably mean an added extra premature gray hair to her head. That's mostly what we thought. And your fathers, what were your predictions about mother's reaction? Well, of course, it's a little hard for father to put, in place, put himself in the place of the mother, but uh, we felt that, uh, well, first she probably was disappointed that finally it happened, and yet uh, she was hoping it wouldn't. And probably felt some resentment that it had finally happened to her boy. And then she would uh, fear for his safety. <coughs> Next, you boys, over here in this corner of this table. What did you think Mother's reaction would be? Well, we thought probably the, her reaction would be she would wonder how the morals of her son would be when he returned from the service. There's a lot of talk about the morals in service, and she she would probably wonder if they would be lowered when they when he left the service. And finally, your mothers. How well did you predict Mrs. Adams' reaction? Well, we felt that. Uh, uh, she may have tried to prepare herself for, for the actual getting the notice. So it would be bound to be shot, perhaps one of the hardest things that she has ever faced. But uh, not only a shock, but uh, uh, most of the mothers at the table expressed the belief that she would feel considerable resentment. Thank you. Well, it appears that... Um, Mother didn't say all that you thought she would have in her mind. And that brings something to mind, too. Because, well, when we face something very serious many times, we say one thing. Way back in the back of our heads somewhere are the ideas that don't quite get out. In other words, we, we say one thing, but we're thinking another. Let's go back to our family again and ask them, what they were really thinking as they were saying the things we've just heard them say. Mrs. Adams, what were you really thinking? Have we loved and reared and educated our sons simply for cannon fodder? Surely that cannot be. My husband and I don't always agree. He is always so sure he's right. Maybe he doesn't understand that there are other opinions also. Then, too, there is so much that is evil in the service. Our boy doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink. He's particular about the company he keeps. And if he goes into the service, he may not have the strength because of his youth to stave off the temptations. Of course I'm worried. In my mind, I'm in an awful spot. Uh, after you go through the service and come out, and you look back at it as an adventure that you're glad you took, but you wouldn't do it again. You wouldn't do it again because it's a waste of years. Those years are very productive years when you first get started. 
This boy's in a spot. He's going to have to go. He's going to have to accept it. And uh, in my mind, I doubt, I, I really wonder how he's going to take the service. He's, had, he's been just a little more protected than the average boy. He's the only son. His mother is very protective. He's a good boy. He's got good qualities. But it just makes me wonder how, how he's going to do. And I just wonder how my sister's going to take it. She's on a spot. Well, Bill, you were a little older when you went in the service, and Glenn will be. You were 23. He's 19. Your character was a little more well-formed. You were more mature, and uh, you were perhaps a little better able to say no when temptations came your way, too, than Glenn is. I can understand and appreciate why his mother is worried about that. As far as we're concerned, I, I don't know, I'm kind of mixed up myself. Glenn and I care a lot for each other, and we're old enough to know that we care. And we're old enough to know that, well, marriage is what we want, and yet we can't deny that we're younger than, well, most couples are when they get married. And it seems to me that Glenn's mother has kind of made his decisions for him a lot. And that going into service and deciding about a, whether to take a, a deferment or not will be a decision and maybe help grow him up a little more and maybe help us settle our problems some, too. Well, we didn't raise our boy to be a soldier, nor a sailor, nor an aviator. But we did raise him up to do a good job and to do whatever job had to be done when it had to be done and some of them have been dirty jobs this is just another one of those dirty jobs we didn't choose it somebody's got to do it and yet the very fact that we enjoy the liberty we do in this country is due to the fact that somebody was willing to do those dirty jobs and maybe each generation will have to do it until somehow or other we find a better way of solving our international problems uh, I don't know, Mother. I can't see Glenn letting the other boys do his work for him. I don't know how you feel, but uh, still in all, I believe when there's a job to do, uh, Glenn will want to do this year. That's right, Dad. When my part comes, what? My time is here. I figure I might as well do it. You know how bad I hate to leave there, Dad. But I guess it's my time, boy. I'll have to take it and do as I can do. I don't want to back down on anything. I want to go with the rest of the boys, just like the rest of the boys are going. It's hard to say that, though, when you got livestock at home, but when it's your time, it's your time. Now that we've heard from our family, both in what they say, what they think, will you people take a little time to talk over what advice you would give to the members of the family who had a chance to talk to them. What would you say to them? What sort of good counsel could you give them? You better than for example. Suppose you know mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. The way of good advice. Helping <clears throat> work this thing out with the family the best way you can see fit. And you've been through it, your family's faced the same thing. And you know what, what Bill is, he's been in service and out. Now, what would you have to say to him? My wife, my wife is Bill. Here's Alice. He's a little undecided, apparently. But uh, you're much the same age as she is. That's the same situation. You know, some of you are in the service, you know pretty well. What sort of advice would you give her? If Alice were to come over and sit right down here, uh, would each of you have something to offer? What would you think about it and talk it over for a few minutes? Likewise, your father. Here's Mr. Adams. He's got a he's got a farm. He's got a problem. He can't run it alone. If he were to come over here and sit down, you knew him as a friend. 
what sort of uh, good advice could you give him? Do you anything you could say to him that would help him solve this problem inside his own family? Suppose you talk it over for a couple of minutes and decide what each of you would say to him if he were to sit here and ask for your advice. Your mother's too. Here's Mrs. Adams with something pretty special on her mind. And uh, Glenn's got his orders. Nothing he can do about it now. The guy is pretty much cast for him. If she were to sit here, what could you say to her to, to help her out and help her solve her problem better? Find me a boy. This for Glenn's chair. And if he were sitting here, you're in practically the same situation he is. What would you say to him? You would sit here. Could you give me any advice? Why don't you talk it over just a minute and, and uh, decide what you would say to Glenn if you were to come over and sit down. Well, boys, you saw the spot I was on. I want some advice. Now, what, what, first thing, what are you going to do to calm your sister down in a situation like that? That's a tough problem. What are you going to do is tell her to grow up? You can't do that. She's older than I am. What would you do? I'm not quite sure. I, I think it is a problem with each person. You've got to talk it out and you know that individual while you can find some line you can convince them that things usually work out for the best. But it may not be as bad, and perhaps time looks so short now, but a few years from now, it'll work out. It has for most people. She's not alone in it. No. But still, I think that'd be the answer to it. It's tough. What do you think? What would you say? What would you tell her? Well, I suppose I'd tell her that during the last war and up till now, there's millions, I suppose you could say, <coughs> of uh, sisters and mothers and daughters that have been in the same situation. So uh, uh, she can come through it, all right. She just has to make up her mind to, to go through it. Uh, uh, there's just one thing I'd like to mention. Uh, uh, there's been a little discussion about getting exemptions. Now, um, I, w I wish that uh, there was no such word concerning this military training. If, if, uh, if they would just take everyone when they graduate from high school, I think it would be a fine deal. No exemption at all, except physically. Uh, disabled people. Okay. And secondly, they shouldn't get keep them in over 12 or 18 months at the most, I don't think. I think we all agree on that deferment thing, don't we? Okay. What, uh, what do you think we ought to tell this boy? What's some good dope to tell the boy that's going into the service, <laughs> besides keeping his health records up? <laughs> <laughs> well, he should uh, he take temptation. Now, that's a lot of hooey yeah. for uh, service, because uh, if you're in service, it don't make any difference whether you're in service or outside. I'll guarantee you there's more temptations outside here in civilian life than there is in the service because you're not there where there's temptations. Because they usually ship you out when you had your training. And there's not too much temptation over there. There's a lot more back here and if you're worried about and about uh, the boy getting uh, up in action, it's safer for him being up on the front lines than it would be for him to drive from here to Marshalltown. <laughs> I think that moral thing sticks around more than the situation I was in, <laughs> and I guess some of you kind of know how I feel, and frankly, I I need some help. I really have a lot of things that I just don't know. What would you do? Well, if you were absolutely positive that you want to get married right away, well, okay, you should go ahead and get married. But if you're not absolutely positive, and you think that you might accidentally change your mind, then it'd be better that if you still want to get engaged, to get engaged and then wait, because it won't hurt to wait a little longer. What do you think? Well, I believe you could have an engagement period and, and wait a while and really be sure. You see, his mother thinks you're too young. and It would be a little hard if he goes away and his mother thinks you're too young to be married. And 
you'd have a rough time of it and, and a long engagement time. It gives you a lot of time to think over your problems and get them solved before you actually get married. I think it's better to wait a little longer and think a little more rather than mm-hmm. less You can always more. wait for him. What do you think? Well, I think you ought to think it over very carefully, too, because this has come, you've more or less been expecting it, but still it's sort of a sudden shock to you. And now you're sort of all mixed up and confused. I know I would be. And I think it's something that you ought to consider very carefully and talk over together and with your parents with his before you even consider an engagement, because that's, that's pretty binding, too. And I think you ought to, you ought to consider it very carefully before you even got engaged. About you. Well, I more or less agree with the girls, except I've heard some girls talking in my group about if you're engaged, well, you might as well be married. But I see what they mean by, by waiting, being engaged, because then when he gets back, you'll certainly be sure if you really love him or not. I think it's a good idea to wait myself. <coughs> well, I understand you gentlemen are in somewhat the same situation that I am and that you all have boys about ready to be inducted into the service. Uh, You've talked over this problem between you. I don't know just how similar your problem is to mine. You may have more boys than I. You may not be operating farms where the labor situation would be the same. But how could you advise me? You've heard me say that I'm not really opposed to the boy doing his share in military service, uh, but you do know that it's going to be hard on his mother, and that uh, uh, really the, the, my big problem is to reconcile her to the fact that her boy is going into service. Well, we didn't think about that part of the problem so much as uh, the farm problem. Uh, we were thinking that, uh, how would you get along alone? I don't think on the mother's part you have, well, you have too much to worry about, it, do you? Oh, I hope you're right. Well, as far as uh, your son's having to go, it is a problem, particularly where you've been de- depending on him greatly for help. But after all, uh, I feel when my own sons are they're just as important to me as a father as any son could be. Not any more so. They're probably not any more important to me on a farm than a son perhaps who is helping his father run a grocery store or an oil business or an implement business. Perhaps that father is depending on his son as much as you are on yours. There's another thing. Your son is in a very formative period now possible he might go to a service and decide that he doesn't care to farm when he gets to Well, I thought of that, too. Of course, that's his own decision. That's, I won't that's stand right. in his way on no. that. But this is a problem that you have to face now. And uh, my own feeling on it is that it isn't a thing that we're responsible for individually, but it's a thing that we have to face. What shall I do about it? Is it worthwhile to get uh, our son deferred? Shall we try and get him to college just to hold him back? What do you think about it? Well, your son is now 19, and if he doesn't care for college, I certainly wouldn't encourage him to go there. I would hesitate to bring, yes, because as he said, all the other boys are facing it, and they have to do it. And should probably be the same. I don't think I would ever consider having my boy deferred. It, it seems to me like uh, it would be a little hard for him to come back to the community and know that some of the boys had shouldered their responsibility. Uh, I just don't, don't think I'd ever ask for the phone for him. Uh, it's, it's his responsibility as much as anybody else. Yes, I would feel the same. Uh, the thing that I think that I would do uh, is that I would send him off as happily as I could because that means a lot to him to know that the home folks are backing him. And uh, try hard to keep the home ties 
just as intact as possible by writing off and sending packages, whether they're in the United States or abroad, and uh, keeping them uh, well informed about things at home. I think that means a lot to them. And when he comes on furlough, give him the best time that you possibly can, and I know you'll be happier and so will he. You no, know, I think it would help him a lot to accept the fact that he's going to go. If you can sell yourself on the idea that this military service of his is important, if you can overcome the feeling of resentment that some people have that we feel that uh, uh, we never should have gone to Korea, I think we had to go, and there are lots of people uh, who know all about it, uh, who feel that we had to go into Korea. I think if you can convince yourself first that the service is important and necessary, Here's my problem, so what would you boys do? Well, if you have to go in, why don't you go in and like you're liking it. Just go in and make the best of it. It'll be only two years. Just go in and like it, and if you can be further advancement, why, keep right on with it. Just go like it while you're in there. Well, what do you think? Well, uh, I'm looking at the problem of uh, getting married. And as I look at it now, I think it would be best if, well, you waited till uh, you were about out, or maybe till your second furlough or something like that, because then that uh, will uh, give you a time when you are separated and you will, if you are in love, uh, then you will know it uh, for sure, because uh, you will have been separated. And although there is more money in being married when you're in the army, but uh, I don't think that's one of the main uh, the main uh, things. But another thing you have to look at: uh, you might uh, have a family while you're in the army, and something might happen to you, and there your bride would be with the sole responsibility of the family. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, I was thinking that. Maybe somehow or another that you might get into some training in the army that might, when you get out of the service, do you some good on the farm. Say, for instance, maybe mechanics. You get to work on different kinds of motors and uh, learn how to keep them well maintained. And, and there is a chance that you could look forward to you getting into some branch of the service like that. Mm -hmm. Well, Glenn, you're. You're not very old yet, and you haven't got your mind made up in quite a few things. And well, when you get in there, what I'd do, Barry, I'd watch you. I hung around. With. Now there's a lot of nice fellows in there, and there's a lot of them that aren't so nice. Now you can come back a million-dollar kid like you are now, and you can come back a two bit Thank you very much. Well, in the last few minutes, you've given the Adams family the benefit of your advice. And speaking to the Adams, I'd like to thank all of you. Because you see, this matter of giving advice is, is not so easy in a very serious problem like this. And the taking of it certainly isn't easy either. Because, well, whatever, whatever touches us very closely, we feel is our own very special problem. And nobody else's is just exactly like it. And it's, it's pretty hard to take advice on something like this. And so the Adams family is, is very grateful. I wonder what they would have said, how their reaction would have been, if they'd had the benefit of this counsel and advice ahead of time before Glenn first came in with that notice. Let's see. Just after dinner, the Adams family is out on the front porch, or back porch, rather. The sun is going down, beginning to cool off just a bit. About, uh, about 8.20 in the evening. Come in, Glenn. Right. Hi, young boy. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Well, you feel like I do after your mother's supper? Yeah, it's full of stuff. You're not the good cook, Mrs. Adams. Thank <laughs> you. You don't have to walk chairs at all. What are you busy? Well, I can eat again now. <laughs> Well, that's not for a lot. <laughs> what you got, boy? 
Well, I got my notice to get on from my physical. Well, good. Your waiting's finally over, huh? That's right. Well, that's a relief, isn't it? That's right, well. <laughs> well, I think that I've learned a little. I think perhaps I've been too selfish. But uh, you'll have to do your duty just like the rest of the boys. When it's your time to go, you'll have to go. We do have a principle to fight for, and I want you to buck up and have just as much courage to make this world a decent place to live in as the rest of them. No, you don't have to worry about him. His character's already set before he goes into the Army, and your base is what they build on in the Army. If he's, if he's not set now, I, he never will be. I think he's done a good job. What do you think, Pops? 